Uh, good evening. I'm very glad to be here. Um, what's this talk about? The word bias makes us think there is such thing as unbiased data or technology. But I want to argue that rather it is about the abstraction and the conscious or unconscious implications we inscribe into the models. The models we use to build our technologies in the process of construction. Finally, our perspectives of the world become part of technology that in the end shapes our perception and behavior and the working of the world. Who am I? Um, this is not me, but I might have looked similarly irritated when one day I opened eBay and I was advertised hipster fashion wear. For a moment, I really started to think, is this what I am? Have I become a hipster without realizing it? Or am I a wannabe hipster? Do I want to be one? There are nice glasses and hats offered here. Then the analytical self came up. Is the data wrong? What did I look for that makes eBay think I'm a hipster? Or was my flatmate on my computer? Or do they target our common IP address? I still don't know. But the crucial point is tech is not perfect. Data models make errors. But still, this affects us. In my case, it brought me to self-reflection and made me think if I should be more open to fashion. But more sure than about my fashion, I'm about my profession. So I did some research on data protection and privacy since 2010, um, consultancy since 2017. I've got a computer science background and I did a doctoral thesis about sociology, uh, about open source software communities in sociology of technology and science. So back to the biases. Besides my targeted advertisement, advertisement experience, there are more severe cases of wrong data models. Just some headlines to illustrate some prominent cases you might heard from. Amazon scraps secret AI recruiting tool that showed bias against women. Predictive policing algorithms are racist. Microsoft shuts down AI chatbot after it turned into a Nazi. We see um, technology is promising and useful, but we may face dysfunctional effects of technology design, illegitimate automated decisions, questionable incentives to act and to behave. And importantly, technology is often conceived as neutral, such as mathematics. And the combination of a neutral perception and strong technological efficiency can bring injustice, which is inscribed in the model and comes to a large scale. But what's the matter with broken data models? Um, Data models are shaped by the selection of data, by the availability of data, what can be measured in the first place, for instance, by validity or by history, since data always is taken from the past and real life is often already unfair. There might be others. I don't want to go much uh, too much too deep into that. Um, what can be the solution? More data, better data? I propose a more reflexive technology construction. Because it's not only the data models, it's more than that. Models can be very concrete, like a crash test dummy, a model of the human body with a standardized shape and weight of a man. It turns out that this model taken from a standard man led to a safety design which makes cars less safe for women. Many implications are unconscious. Often we just use an eye methodology to conceptualize the working of technology and unconsciously include our subjective worldview. And to illustrate what I mean with subjectivity, 
I brought to you an example. It's an example taken from Michel Foucault's Order of the Things, a quote from an ancient Chinese encyclopedia, encyclopedia sorry, which offers an ontology which is very hard to accept for us today, here. Let me read loud. Animals are divided into A, belonging to the conqueror, uh, to the emperor, <laughs> B, embalmed, C, tame, D, sucking pigs, E, sirens, F, fabulous, G, stray dogs, H, included in the present classification, I, friendsight, J, innumerable, K, drawn with a very fine camel hair brush, L, etc. M, having just broken the water pitcher, N, dead from a long way off, look like flies. If you had a laugh, I hope, I hope you had a laugh, sorry. I find it always a bit disturbing also. But this ontology used to seem logic for people of a certain culture in a certain time. So ontology, logic, our perception of how things are, are deeply cultural. But there are also decisions and limitations made on purpose. These limitations often are helpful to fulfill a specific goal. In the process of modeling, assumptions are made, decisions are taken between options which limit future possibilities. In the process of modeling, an important question is also who has a say in taking decisions, on which basis decisions are made. These models here are useful to demonstrate the construction of a boat or to measure the flow resistance, but they cannot necessarily swim. They are not the product itself. So during the process of technology construction, the assumptions and decisions of the model will be challenged and reconsidered at a later time. Here you see how a development team simulates situations for a detection algorithm. They build a model for the situations for the recognition of falls of seniors. In such scenarios, developers define which situations should be significant for an alarm, which requires thorough reasoning, since those definitions are key for the recognition rate and the use of the technology in the end. It might even risk or save lives to recognize a fallen senior or not. Models in IT conceptualize key parts of the software, like the data structure or classes of programs. They later become, become part of the software. Other than the ship models we saw before, those models are already an integral part of the end product. Limitations and abstractions implicated will often not be challenged again, but flow directly into software code. The model is already the product here. Let me now come to how technology can take effect on behavior consciously, beyond implicit assumptions and necessary limitations for models. Technologies also be designed to script behavior. Let me give you two very illustrative textbook examples of science and technology studies. Speed bumps are a technology which leads people to drive slowly, not because they take care of playing children, but because they take care of their car. A very funny object is the Berlin Keys. It's a simple object, but a great example of how technology can script a whole user geography. It's a key which sticks in the door while the door is open. So once the door is opened, you can't get out your key. You have to push the key through the hole, go inside, and shut the door again to get back 
your key. Otherwise, you don't have the key. So this is designed to take care that the door of a house stays closed. It's a very simple object, but a very complex choreography, which is designed into the technology. So back to the digital, uh, at least the beginning of the digital, who knows DVDs? Um, these DV <laughs> many, many might. Uh, these video discs shipped with region keys in order to enforce the publication date of movies. Um, DVDs from US, for instance, could not be played on a European DVD player because the region code did not fit. Today, digital rights management is much more elaborated in streaming services, but it shows how um, behavior or how, how the use of technology can be shaped by its design. Another example for nudging users, you can find in cookie banners. At least in Europe, you are confronted with so-called dark patterns on a daily basis. Since companies are obliged to oblige to limit the use of personal data, they try to nudge users to consent to a broad range of data collection. I know this is no black or white, but from a user perspective, this is really a pain. These are examples of influencing users in their way of using technology. But this is conscious modeling of user action or scripting the way people interact with technology. With a number of sociologists, I worked on a concept um, on conceptualizing the science and technology studies idea of moral inscription. If we think of influencing user interaction, we have two opportunities to change her aims or her opportunities. The first way for changing users' aims is just information in order to change her interpretation. For instance, we can uh, give information why cookies make sense and give a better user experience. But we can also change the resources and give an inducement. Cookies, cookie banners, for instance, who are ignored and just stay until you accept. And until you accept, you can't see anything from the page you're visiting at the moment. Then we can change the resources through offering or not offering options, for instance. That would be the provision of resources. You can have loads of options or can offer uh, to, to opt in every one of the thousand um, cookies or everything at one click, for instance. So the cookie itself is a resource for interaction. And coercion would be if you can only proceed after you clicked accept or if you just have one single button saying OK. In the example of a cookie banner, this shouldn't make too much of a sense, but I experienced banners which seemed to keep me in the loop until I finally accepted. There might be no option to not accept in some cases. Um, what I discussed now can be illustrated as a constructionist model. Together with a colleague, Jörg Pohle, I drafted a concept to combine the computer science view of models with the sociological view of inscription to illustrate the way we bring limitations and assumptions in technology and shape the world through its application. Models are an abstraction of the problem with a purpose and a plan for a solution. In the process of construction, this materializes into artifacts like protocols, code, or libraries. Each of these bricks entails, again, assumptions and limitations. Step by step, the technology is combined by parts and bricks with limitations and assumptions. Finally, these become invisible in the final product, but the system takes effect in its application into the world. So let me get more practical. As promised in a talk description, let me very shortly give you two examples of my empirical work. 
The install routines of three Linux distributions tell a lot about their user view. Um, they may be a wizard, which let you install the system without any hassle, or they may be the installer may be a simple menu, which gives you loads of options. Um, or you have the whole power of the command line, but you need to learn how to get the single steps of the installation done on your own. Um, remarkably, this different modeling of, of the user and the user experience um, is already implicated in the, in the slogan of, of the distributions. Debian comes as the universal operating system. Ubuntu um, is the Linux for human beings. And Arch Linux comes as a simple, lightweight distribution. You can also find this in um, what I call the RTFM policy, uh, which you can find in the community practices and the policies. Um, for instance, users might say, saying RTFM is not cool, not following the code of conduct. Or the project leader says, when the code is public, RTFM is the proper answer, document it properly afterwards. Or people might say, RTFM helps the noob. You can also find this uh, in the social structures of the community, but I have to skip that if for reasons of the time. Another illustration of the power of models can be found in the Android permission model which changed in Android 6. In the old model, users could see all permissions of an app before the installation, install time permissions. In the new model, users could opt in every single permission. Wait, every single permission? No. Part of the new model was that a number of permissions were defined as normal permissions, which need no interaction. For instance, the internet access of the app is always granted, which research found to be a, categor a category users experience as sensible and would like to control. Since internet access means the app can also transfer sensible data to remote service. Interestingly, um, when our, while in our project, we worked on making permission dialogues easier to understand, uh, Apple came up with new dialogues. Also interesting is uh, that our research showed that people were surprised to realize how much information the location data exactly meant when they saw the illustration of their movements on the map. So information and awareness can make a difference here. And uh, let me add the model of the permission model um, is, is a strong definition of what you can do as an application developer. Um, still, you can write something in the dialogues, but the permission model is already fixed by the model um, of the ecosystem. So in conclusion, ideas, ideas become materialized into models and implemented or inscribed into technology. It's much more than biased data. It's our view on the world assumptions and limitations in every brick of the technology. It's the culture of the developers. All this shapes technology and takes effect on the world through user interaction, but also through computations and decisions which are made or suggested by algorithms. It's a continuous process to keep in mind the responsibility of technology construction and find ways to reflect and challenge assumptions, limitations, and the effects it takes in every step of development. Thanks for listening. I'm looking forward to questions. And a paper will follow soon.